تحشر الهدى إيمانا وموعظة فبالجهالة قد خابت مساعينا خابت مناقبنا وسود حاضرنا وأوشك مناقبنا وسود حاضرنا وأوشك اليأس أن يغشى Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome to another edition of the Suleiman Rabbit Show. We are coming to you live this Friday evening from our studios in Sunning Hill, Johannesburg. Last few Fridays we were not live due to my traveling commitments. I was in Durban for a major program. And uh, last week Friday I was in uh, Zirist. Uh, I was invited there to conduct a program, Juma, and then afternoon ladies program, and then in the evening a program in the Masjid. A phenomenal experience it was, I must mention. Uh, a shout out to the people of uh, Zirus, Jazakumullah. Phenomenal hospitality and they took us out to the farm on the outskirts of uh, Zirus and we spent some time there at night. We had a nice braai and uh, the next morning after Fajr they uh, took us uh, on the farm, a bit of a game drive and then uh, they put us in the quad bikes and oh that was it was, a, it was an enjoyable experience, it was an exhilarating experience. It was after many, many years that I had an opportunity to actually get on a quad bike. And uh, I can tell you there was a, you know, open space of land, you know, big long roads, and I could really open up. I could really uh, you know, have a go at it. Uh, you felt like a kid once again. You felt like uh, a youngster, a teenager. And uh, alhamdulillah, you know, good uh, refreshing uh, experience. Nice to interact with people um, in various localities and various communities in the country. You know, uh, yeah, the next few weeks will be busy in that regard as uh, uh, we fulfill different commitments to, you know, different localities and communities, going to their localities, uh, you know, doing programs in their masajid, uh, doing programs at their functions. Uh, this year, during the course of the year, because of a very hectic schedule, I had postponed Request from you know for, from a few different towns, and I'm trying to now uh, play catch up uh, in the in the dying months of the year, as they say. Yes, um, the year is passing us by, isn't it? Uh, we're already into November. We're coming to the halfway mark of November. It's pretty much about a month left of serious work because after the 16th of December, things start to move into that shutdown mode. The first public holiday there, the 16th, people start to move away. Even those businesses that are open up till the third week of December, they start slowing down. By then the schools are well and truly closed and the students are at home and the children are at home. And you, you're truly into that holiday mood and, and things start picking up once again only in and around uh, the second week of uh, January. And then uh, just recently we were talking about the commencement of the Islamic year, the Hijri year, 1437. And tonight is the first of Safar. One month from the Hijri year, 1437 has already passed us by. Muharram al-Haram is gone. As the sun set this evening, the first of Safar came in. They, they, they sought the moon yesterday. They looked for the moon yesterday. But they did not find uh, the moon. So we, we had 30 days in Muharram. And today is the first of Safar. And like that, the months will pass us by. Then we'll be talking Rabiul Awwal. And then uh, the, you know, we'll, always be, we'll almost be start, uh, st we'll, we'll, we'll start commencing with the countdown in as far as uh, the month of Ramadan is concerned. So once again, I remind myself and we remind one and all that time waits for nobody, absolutely nobody. Time passes you by and before you realize your life would have passed you by. And it's about appreciating every moment. It's about not dwelling in the present and not, uh, you know, not rewinding, not, not, not being stuck in rewind mode, always going down into the past. No, you know, being stuck in forward wine where you're always too worried about the future. The flavor is in the present. The flavor in this, is in the present. And the past has gone stale. The future is still raw, but the flavor is in the present. So enjoy the present and maximize and optimize on the present. Many times we postpone many things, you know, later in my life, I'll focus more on Ibadah. Right now, let me get this doing, uh, let, me, let me get this done or let me get that done. That later never comes. What guarantee do we have that that later will come? So let's appreciate every moment for, for what it is right at this moment. Enjoy the present and take maximum benefit uh, from the present. Those are a few uh, opening thoughts. You know, I, I mentioned earlier in the week that um, I wrote a speech when I was in school. When I was in Senate 7, well, let, let me correct that, right? I didn't write the speech. I gave the speech. <laughs> you know how it is when you're in school. I mean, uh, you're lazy, especially if you're doing his class simultaneously. So I didn't write the speech. I think I took it from some book or something. But uh, I got a good mark for the speech. And I, I don't remember a word of that speech. But what I do remember, what I do remember is the title of the speech. And the title was, Water, Water, 
everywhere. Water, water everywhere. And uh, in this week, it came back to me, that particular title. And the reason it came back to me is because wherever you look, read, wherever you listen, wherever you talk, it's all about the water situation in the country, the water crisis, uh, the water restrictions, the water challenges. Everyone is talking about water. So in that sense, it's water, water everywhere. Wherever you go, whoever you talk to, whatever you read, whatever you listen to, it's all about water. So from that perspective, uh, I, you know, I was making a joke earlier this week and I said, it reminded me of the title of that speech, Water, Water Everywhere. But I think when we talk about water, and I'm going to be dedicating my, my program this evening to talk about water, to talk about uh, what the Quran tells us about water. And in the second half of the program, I'm going to be opening the lines because we're coming to you live this evening. And I'm going to be asking you to interact with me and to give me your perspective on the water crisis and the water situation in South Africa. So for the first half of the program, I'll be doing some talking. And the second half of the program, I hope that inshallah, you'll be doing some talking. So from now, start giving it some thoughts, some, uh, start applying your mind to it so that uh, when we come around 9 o'clock or so and we open up the lines, you are able to give some perspective and you're able to give some, uh, uh, you know, some advice and, and, and share your thoughts. But what I wanted to mention up front, I think there's a very key point. There's a very pivotal point that we need to understand in life. You know, in, in, in English, we are all familiar with the proverb, with the saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. And why is that? If you take your spouse as an example, you see your spouse every day, you wake up next to your spouse, you go to bed, uh, sleeping next to your spouse, you're living under the same roof, you see each other every day. And uh, you, you, your spouse decides to go on a journey, or you go on a journey and you're not traveling with each other. And it's just three days, five days, ten days. And all of a sudden, even though it's just three days or five days or ten days, you feel that, hey, there's that longing there. I feel a void in my life. I feel an emptiness in my life without my spouse. Uh, I'm just using spouse as, a, as an example, you know, your, 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 your wife or your husband. And that's when you start re to realize how much you love that person. And that is when you start to realize how much that person means to you and how integral and how important it is for that person to be part of your life. You see, every day when that person is part of your life, you take it for granted because it has become a norm. It has become a routine. So every morning when you wake up next to your spouse and every evening when you go to bed next to your spouse and when you're having meals with your spouse and you're talking with your spouse, it becomes part of the normal routine of your life. So you don't, you don't think too much about it. But then when there is that period when there's absence, that's, that's when it kicks in how much that person means to you. And that's why they say absence makes the heart grow fonder. They actually encourage that for relationships to, uh, you know, to, to regain their spark every now and again, you take a bit of a break from each other, you know, let the one go out for a while or whatever, and it brings that spark back in because it makes you realize how much you actually value and treasure that person. Now, I gave spouse an, as an example, but in reality, it, this, this principle applies to all the bounties of Allah. Wa ta'ala. And the more important the bounty, the more it will apply. And the same goes with water. You see, when you have access, and you have regular access, and you have access to as much water as you want, then you don't understand, you know, the, the, the true value of water. You don't understand what a great bounty, what a great favor of Allah wa ta'ala it is upon you. Because whenever you want it, it's there. You just open the tap and it's there. Uh, it's there. It's, it's good quality. You can drink it. You can bath with it. You can wash your dishes with it. You can wash your clothes with it. You can fill your pool with it. You can wash your car with it. You can water your garden with it. It's there. The tap inside the house, the tap outside the house, the tap connected to the dishwasher, to the washing machine, all those taps work. The pool is filled with water, there's enough water to wash the cars. So water and the existence of water and the abundance available in a, the availability of water in abundance and the accessibility of water and the regularity with which you can access it, that makes it part of routine. And then the value of this great bounty of Allah wa ta'ala starts to diminish in our eyes. And it is only when we have occasions like this where now we feel what it is like not to have it, even if it just be for a day or two, even if it be just for a, for a few hours. Even if it be just the thought now of not having it, because some places in the country, or most places in the country, there haven't yet been water restrictions. There haven't yet been problems with the water supply. But just the thought now, that it's, 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 it, it's could, it could be coming, it's just around the corner, it could happen at any time, it's happening to a suburb not so far away from me, that now makes you start realizing 
What a great bounty of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala it is. What a great favor. What a great blessing of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala it is. Well, the realization of that point in itself is some sort of an achievement because every challenge provides us with an opportunity. And this challenge provides us with an opportunity now to start talking about what a great bounty this is from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is what I want to do this, uh, the, this evening. I want to talk about what the Qur'an says about water. What our deen says about water. Because this water restrictions and these water challenges have now provided us with an opportunity to talk about these things, to refresh our memories, to put things back into perspective. Because as, as I said, it, when it was a norm in our lives, a constant in our lives, we started to take it for granted. And then as I said, uh, towards the latter part of the program, uh, the second half of the program, I would like to hear from you. What, what are your thoughts on the water crisis here in South Africa? So we go for a break. When we come back, uh, we are going to talk about uh, different verses of the Quran al Kareem. Go through different verses of the Quran al Kareem that talk about uh, water. And then thereafter, inshallah, we will uh, go up till about 9 o'clock or so and then open up uh, the lines. Welcome back. Now, as I said, let the Quran talk to us about water and the role of water in our existence. The first verse that I want to discuss, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala mentions, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ And we have made from water every living thing. Now when you go into science, they'll tell you about the majority of earth is made up of water, the majority of our body is made up of, of water. All living species are dependent on water. Water is life-sustaining and a purifying response, uh, resource. rather. It's the origin of every living thing. The origin of every living thing is water. And that's why Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ And we have made from water every living thing. If we look at... Uh, okay, now, so water is... That, that one sentence of the Quran tells us about the importance of water. But water in itself can become uh, an asset. It also can become a liability. It can be for our benefit, it also can be to our detriment. I mean, if there's an abundance of water, if, the, if there's an oversupply of water, it causes harm. If, if there's a flood, it causes harm, damage to crops, damage to animals, damage, damage to property, even loss of life. When there's a tsunami, it causes harm. So let's look at another verse of the Quran, where Allah wa ta'ala talks about, one is He's given you the bounty, but He gives you the bounty in the, in the right dosage as well. وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً بِقَدَرِ Allah says, and we send down from the skies rain in due measure. فَأَسْكَنَّاهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And then we give it lodging on the earth. We make it, you know, settle on the earth. وَإِنَّا عَلَىٰ ذَهَابٍ بِهِ لَقَادِرُونَ And we are able to take it away. We are able to take it away. So two things we learn from this verse. The first thing is Allah is saying that it's not only about water, but it's about water that's beneficial. 
Otherwise, water can be harmful to you. So Allah sends rain in right in the correct measure when it's beneficial. To the right place. You know, the places where it is required. To the right extent at the right time. And Allah says, but always remember, وَإِنَّا عَلَى ذَهَابٍ بِهِ لَقَادِرُونَ we are the ones who have the power to take the rain away. We are the ones who have the power to take the water away. So let's ponder here for a moment. Let's just reflect here for a moment. Right now we are going through a drought. There's a scarcity of water. South Africa as it is, it's, it's, a, it's a dry country. Uh, our rainfall, I read the other day, is less than the world average. We, we, we are not a country that has great resources when it comes to water. That's under normal circumstances. Now we have a drought. There's a, there's a shortage of supply of water. Proper water, you know, drinking water, water that's of good quality. Who took it away? Who made the decision? Yes, obviously, climatologists will tell you about El Nino and they'll tell you about the changing weather patterns and the, the prolonged periods of heat and that their research tells us that we won't get much rainfall until at least March and that it could be good three, four, five years of drought and that uh, we are in for a number of years of, of very uh, hot weather much hotter than normal and we can see we are currently experiencing the heat all of that is on its place i'm not taking anything away from that i'm not diminishing those arguments but who created those weather conditions and who created those climate conditions who's in control of all of it it is allah it is allah so allah reminds us in those words wa inna ala dhahabin bihi laqadirun as much as we are the ones who send the rain and we are the ones who send the rain in the right measure we can take it away from you at any time we can take it away from you. That is what Allah wa ta'ala is saying. And as I said, it's a moment of reflection for us. That have our actions been such that Allah is now testing us and Allah wants us to taste a bit by withdrawing, by withdrawing the water, by withdrawing the rains. Have we started to take that bounty of Allah, which is water, uh, to gra for granted to such an extent that now Allah wa ta'ala is making us, Allah is making us realize how much we need water. And how much we need this bounty of Allah wa ta'ala. So we, don't, we, don't, we should not judge the next person. And we should not talk too much in generalized terms. Each one of us should introspect for ourselves. What have I done that could possibly have resulted in Allah wa ta'ala taking this decision? Everything is dependent on water. Let's take a look at another verse. Allah wa ta'ala says, it is he Allah who sends down water from the sky and with it we produce vegetation of all kinds water fulfills many different functions in a society uh, it's the mainstay of, of a human society if you look at history as well you would see how humans and civilizations were concentrated in river basins whether it was the nile whether it was the tigris whether it was the euphrates whether it's uh, in today's time Household, industry, agriculture, freshwater plants, animals, everything requires water. Everything requires water. Water plays an indispensable role in the sustenance of all of our lives. And, and, and you know, the simple fact is that life on earth will not be possible without the presence of water. Life on earth will not be possible without the presence of water. But we only realize the true value of water when there is a shortage. That's the principle which I was explaining before the break. That many times in life, Allah wa ta'ala grants us different bounties, but we only gain a, two, a true appreciation of these bounties when there's a shortage of it, or when we are deprived of it for a particular moment. But everything is in the control of Allah. Allah is the one who said that I'm the one who has the ability to take it away. So then if we want it back, we need to turn to Allah. That, that's the logical thing, isn't it? Look at another verse where Allah wa ta'ala says, Wallahu anzala min as sama iman fa'ahya bihil arda ba'da mawtiha. And Allah sends down water from the skies and gives thereby life to the earth after the earth had become dead. So now the, the ground may be parched and it may be dry and it may be cracking because of the drought. But who is that Allah who will send the rains? that will revive the lands after the lands have become dead. After the lands have become dead. Who is it Allah? Who is that being that will send the rains you know, after the drought? Who will alleviate the drought? Who will alleviate the shortage of water? Is Allah. These verses of the Quran and Kareem are talking to us. The, the fact is Allah gave us this bounty. Then Allah used to give it to us in due measure. It was beneficial and not detrimental. And then also Allah gave it to us uh, with the appropriate quality, in the appropriate way. If we take a look at the verses of Surah Al-Waqi'ah, 
Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ Don't you see the water which you drink? That water which you drink, you know, we take it for granted. You're thirsty, go to the tap, you get water, go to the fridge, go to the water, take water. That water did, that you drink, have you not contemplated, Allah says in Surah Waqiyah, أَأَنْتُمْ أَنزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنزِلُونَ Did you bring down the rains from the cloud? Or did we bring down the rains? And then look at what Allah says. لَوْ نَشَاءُ جَعَلْنَاهُ أُجَاجًا Allah says, if we had wanted to, if we had decided, we could have made the water salty. فَلَوْ لَا تَشْكُرُونَ Why then don't you give thanks? Why then are you not grateful? فَلَوْ لَا تَشْكُرُونَ So what do we learn from here? We saw what happened to those in Port Shepston in that area of KZN when the water was salty in the taps. Can't wash the clothing, it buggers up the washing machine, buggers up the geezer, you can't drink it, people are in panic mode and, and, and you know, people have to pay now a big amounts of money to get water so that they can drink and they can live. So Allah is saying, I not only gave you the water, but I gave it to you in the right dosage, the right time, and also I gave you the right quality of water. Salt water, look at the Dead Sea, nothing can live. So Allah says, I gave you that water which you can drink. I gave you that water which is of benefit to you. لَا تَشْكُرُونَ Why don't you give thanks? Again, it's a point of reflection for us. That did we give thanks? Did we give thanks to Allah wa ta'ala? And if we did not give thanks to Allah wa ta'ala, is that possibly a reason? Is that possibly a reason why we find ourselves in the situation that we find ourselves? Again, I'm going to ask you that in, in your own space, as you're sitting and watching me and listening to me this evening talk to you, in your own space, ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question that what have I done? Have I done any action that could have resulted in, in Allah wa ta'ala now withdrawing His mercy and rain His mercy from Allah? What is the mercy from Allah? And has it been my lack of gratitude? Has it been my lack of gratitude that has resulted in this? Has it been that because I haven't been showing the appreciation for the bounty that I ought to be showing? What was our lifestyle? Let's be honest. When we used to step into the shower, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, sit in the shower. When you, you, know, air, you wash the car all the time, the car, the car is cleaner than we are, uh, wa wa watering the plants excessively. When we make wudu in the masjid, the water is gushing down. And then we chat into the man next door, hey, how is it? Many long time no see and the water is running. Whether it is our own expense or somebody else's expense, it's, it's a bounty of Allah wa that we were not showing gratitude for. Because if you are grateful for a bounty of Allah wa ta'ala, then you would be responsible for that bounty of Allah wa ta'ala. You would not be irresponsible. So those are a few thoughts. I have a few more thoughts which I will share with you a little later. But uh, we're going to go for a break. And when we come back, the lines will be open. So the lines are open from now. You can start calling. I want your thoughts on the water crisis situation in South Africa. Water restrictions, water shortage. What are your thoughts? What is your advice? The lines are now open 011 086 7777. That's 011 086 7777. When we come back from the break, we hope to be taking your calls. <laughs> وينشر الهدي إيمانا وموعظة فبالجهالة قد خابت مساعينا غابت مناقبنا وسود حاضرنا وأوشى غابت مناقبنا وسود حاضرنا وأوشك اليأس أن يغشى Welcome back. The line's open. People, let's hear you talking. It's been a number of weeks since we've been, we've been able to talk via the airwaves of ITV. We have the opportunity this evening. Let's maximize on it. The line's open. 11 What are your thoughts on the water crisis, the water shortage in, in South Africa? How, how do you analyze it? What's your perspective on it? What are your thoughts in terms of the way forward? What are your thoughts on some of the points that we have uh, covered 
in, in what we have discussed uh, thus far in, 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 the in the last 20, 25 minutes or so. The lines are open. Let's see where the first caller will come from. Will it come from one of those areas where there has been water restrictions, where there has been a water challenge? Even those areas, please call in. Tell us about it. Tell us what you've learned. I mean, if you are from the Port Shepston area of that area of KZN where there's been water shortages, I understand here in, 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 in South Africa, in, 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 in Gauteng, uh, places like Robert Sherman, and, you know, Zakaria Park, I know there have been serious water problems. And uh, what, what have your experiences been like? And more importantly, what have those experiences taught you? What have those experiences taught you? That's what we want to hear from you this evening. 011-086-7777. I know it's hot, people. I know it's hot. We are currently experiencing a heat wave. But uh, don't worry, you won't burn if you pick up uh, the telephone. The telephone is pretty cool. And uh, it, won't, uh, it won't burn your fingers. I'm sure our systems are all up and running. I know now and then we have a few gremlins in the system. People try and call and, and it just doesn't come through. So we think there are no calls. I hope we won't have any of those problems this evening. But we won't know until you don't start calling and you don't start trying. You know, I was talking before the break about uh, if we had to analyze our lifestyles, we would notice how much we used to waste water. And we still do. And, and we need to understand that uh, that, was an, uh, that, that was actually us displaying ingratitude for a great favor and a great bounty of Allah. There's a famous hadith, and you may have heard it many times, but it's worthy of reminding ourselves all the time. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by, Marra bi Sa'din, he passed by Sa'd radiallahu an, wa huwa yatawadda, and Sa'd radiallahu an was performing wudu. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma hadha saraf, why are you wasting water? So he said, Ya Rasulullah, afil wudu i israf, can I be wasting water when I'm performing ablution, when I'm making wudu, which is actually a, an act of worship, which is actually an act of ibadah? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Naam, yes. Wa in kunta ala nahrin jarin. Even though you may be next to a river that is flowing with water. Even though you may be next to, be a, you, may be next to you may be making wudu next to a river that's flowing with water. There's an abundance of water. Then too, you should not waste. Then too, you should not waste water because it's a bounty from Allah. You use it to the extent that you require it, but you should not waste it. Now imagine, he was not doing something which was, uh, you know, uh, recreational, something which was for entertainment. He wasn't using water for any of those kind of things. Like, you know, we have these water balloons and we let the children throw each other with water balloons and you waste water or these water guns and you're spating each other and, and you're shooting each other with these water guns. Nothing of that sort. He was making wudu. And wudu is essential for salah. Wudu is essential for salah. Yet Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told him, even when you're making wudu, you should not be wasting water. Even when you're making wudu, you should not be wasting water. Now, if we look at that, what does that tell us? It tells us that Islam expects us to use water responsibly even if there's no drought. Water conservation has to take place all the time in the life of a Muslim. We ought to be using water responsibly all the time, every time. Before a drought, during a drought, and after the drought, our actions should be the same. Now, it, we must learn these lessons. Sometimes Allah Taala, in His mercy, He deprives us a little, a little bit so that it can remind us, it can show us, it can highlight to us where we are going wrong. And we were using this bounty, we were abusing this bounty of Allah Taala to a large extent. And because we were abusing this bounty of Allah Taala, it's perhaps possible that that's the reason that Allah Taala is depriving us. And Allah wa ta'ala is saying that now I'm going to test you a bit. I'm going to make you, you know, like a parent, you, when you want your child to learn a lesson, when you want your child to take a lesson, you deprive them of something that you know it's imp that is important to them and of, uh, with regards to which they have access. So if the gadget is important to your child, the cell phone, and now you feel that your child needs to know what it means to be deprived, you know, to get a bit of a taste so that they can wake up, then you say, right, I'm taking your cell phone away from the weekend. And automatically when you've taken it away, the child starts to realize, I'm grounding you for a weekend. So you had access to your friends and you had the freedom to go out, but now I'm grounding you. I'm not giving you spending for a month. Now, you do that as a parent out of mercy because you want them to realize and you want them to mend their ways. So in future, you do not have to deprive them and you do not have to restrict them. You can give them, but they will act responsibly. Right? So if the child was misusing, misusing the cell phone, you take it away. The child was misusing the spending. You say, right, I'm taking it away. But what happens then? Your intention is to give it back. Only you want the person to realize what it means to be without it. And you want them to acknowledge that they were using it in the wrong way and to commit now 
that they will reuse it in, in, in the right way. So understand that from a similar perspective, when it comes to Allah wa ta'ala depriving us of the bounties which we were previously enjoying to a larger extent, either depriving us totally or depriving us partially, giving us the taste. Allah wa ta'ala wants us to realize that your attitude in as far as water was concerned was wrong. Your attitude was wrong. And therefore, I'm depriving you somewhat. I'm putting you through some conditions. I'm putting you through some difficulties when it comes to water. It's a wake-up call. Like the parent gives the child a wake-up call, Allah in His mercy wants to give it back to us. Allah wants to give it back to us, but Allah wa ta'ala wants us to acknowledge where we've gone wrong to realize. I'm waiting for your calls, people. 011-086-7777. Let's see which will be the area that will call first in this evening. What are your thoughts on the water crisis? What are your thoughts on the water crisis? What are your thoughts on the problems that we are facing? We will go for a quick break, and hopefully after that, uh, we will have our first call on the line. Uh, let's see him in a bit of a challenge, a bit of a competition as to who would be the first caller to come in this evening on 011 -086 the lines are open we had a caller but unfortunately by the time we we got done with the ad break the caller seems to have dropped the line you can call back on zero double one zero eight six double seven double seven Okay, we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam, Mawlana. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Is this Yusuf Bai from Port Shepston? That's right, Mawlana. You people how are you keeping? Alhamdulillah with your duas. How are you keeping with yeah. the water challenges there? Well, Mawlana, things have to settle down now. Mm -hmm. But one, one, one thing we have realized now, that how important water is in our life. Right. And what we appreciate mostly, Molana, is the amount of work that was done by our community in Port Shipston. Mm. And it made us a sense of pride and humble pride, if I may add. And the way they have come forward to help the people in Port Shipston. And Allah SWT has shown us that the gift that He has given us, He can snatch it away anytime He wants, Molana. Mm. And I feel, I feel as a sense of pride. In a sense that if we conserve the water the way Allah SWT has meant us to conserve with what Rasulullah has taught us, then we definitely will be able to run our life according to Islamic principles, Maulana. True, very true. And one other the important factor here is that even in this time, when these four or five days that we had under the difficulties of having salty water, in the manner in which the community got together and helped one another, it is something that we need to understand that so much can be done if the community bands together and help one another, Molana. Mm. Because water is life after all. And without water, we can do nothing, Molana. And that is my contribution uh, simply for this little while, Molana. You know, I think it's such an important point you make because just this morning on the radio, I was having a discussion and I asked the question that, what would you say, I was asking it to the listeners, that what would you say? is the number one positive quality of South Africans. And many people responded and said, South Africans have these, this ability to stick together in times of difficulty. And it, it was really heartwarming to hear about people who opened up their hearts in those areas where there were water restrictions, people with, water, uh, with boreholes allowing people free access. As you've said in Port Shepston, the whole community coming together, a lot of great initiatives that took place. SubhanAllah, it, gives, it restores our faith in humanity. Well, you, you have to understand one thing, Olana. Mm. That when there is a crisis, then you understand where you, you, what our community really can really do. And this is what I'm trying to say to you now, that I feel a sense of pride in the way the community banded together in, in as much as Dr. Bucks in Port Shepston and quite a few others, the Luckies 
and even multi furniture and all these people they, and even Maulana Mullah who runs a plastic shop. Mm. The amount of work that they did, they not only did it for the Muslim community, Maulana, they showed the other community members also that everyone will be able to supply the water from our borehole, from our massages, and they went round with these Jojo tanks and they supplied to even communities outside our areas, Maulana. And this is what Islam teaches us that we are all, Ya Ayyuhan Nas, we have come from the one one Allah SWT has given us life. And water is life for us, Maulana. So that is why the two principles that we work on one is Wati Ullaha, Wati Rasul. We obey what Allah has told us and we obey the Sunnah of Rasulullah. And if you keep on these two points, Maulana, you cannot go wrong in life because then Gannat becomes wajib on us because we are helping Allah's creation. Because the animal kingdom, the birds in the, in the air, the animals on the, on the ground, even the smallest ants and all, rely on this very fact. The vegetation and all rely on water and all have got life. And if Allah SWT withholds water from us and He punishes us, it's because we must have introspection that we have done something wrong for Allah SWT to punish. And if we ask that question, then surely Allah SWT will say, my bandhas have asked me for maaf. An excessive, ya Mulana, mm. uh, ya, uh, ya, and ask Allah SWT that I'm sorry for what I've done. Please do not punish us. Allah SWT then praises us to the, in front of the malaikas and see how my bandhas are asking me. Don't you agree, Mulana? 100% Yusuf. Jazakumullah for the contribution. Always very right. enlightening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That was Yusuf Bai from Pochepstan. Always look forward to his contributions. Uh, very insightful. And uh, yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier on that uh, challenges and hardships always provide you with opportunities as well. And you see, uh, sometimes we get so stuck in the routine of our lives and we get so stuck in, in, in you know, doing for ourselves and pursuing our own goals. And it takes some sort of difficulty to make us realize what's priority in life. And that's when our sense of humanity comes to the fore and we're there to assist each other. And, and it's so nice to hear about these communities where people took the initiative not only to help the Muslims in the community, but to help the broader communities, to help all the creation of Allah wa ta'ala. Uh, the lines are open, 011-086-7777. If you live in one of those areas where there have been water restrictions, water difficulties, what have you learned? What, what lessons have come to the fore? Even if you don't live in those areas, um, you know, what, what's your take on, on the water shortage and the water uh, situation in South Africa? What, what are your thoughts? Uh, what you think? What, what are your thoughts in terms of what we can learn and how we can move forward? You know, uh, early on in the program, we were talking about how we need to be uh, responsible with water, even in, in, in situations of abundance. As Muslims, we need to be responsible with water uh, consistently, uh, all the time, even when there's no drought. And, 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 it, and we need to remind ourselves that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make wudu with three quarters of a liter, less than one liter, that less than one liter. And obviously, nobody could make a more perfect wudu than Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how much of water do we use uh, when we make wudu? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make ghusl where every inch of your body needs to get wet. You know, a compulsory ghusl as well with between two and a half and three liters of water. Two and a half and three liters of water is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to use to make ghusl. Now I'm saying how much of water don't we use? How many liters in one shower for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour that people spend in the shower? Dolling, jellying, this, that, you know. Uh, singing in the shower, uh, contemplating in the shower while the water is running and running and running. This is a bounty of Allah wa ta'ala. And we have moved away from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And sometimes these situations and these circumstances come upon us from the side of Allah. Everything is from Allah. Even the weather conditions and all the reasons that the analysts and, and the experts will give you, those reasons are accepted. But what's behind all of those reasons? Who caused those reasons? to exist in the first place, it is none other than Allah wa ta Himself. It is Allah wa ta Himself that, have, that has caused these things to come into existence in the first place. So what are your thoughts? We've heard from Yusuf Bayde in Port Shepston. What, what do you feel? 11 086 You know, I, I, this morning I was talking about uh, the effects of heat exhaustion. I don't know if heat exhaustion has got to the viewers out there. Because many times when you open the lines, it's one call after the other, one call after the other. And I would have assumed that on a topic like this, it's of great relevance to everybody. 
Uh, are you so exhausted that uh, you're finding it difficult to press a, a few buttons on the screen, on a touchscreen phone, or on a cordless phone, and, and relax on your couch, or relax on your bed, and, and, and speak from there, and, and share your thoughts with us, share your perspectives uh, with us. Uh, is it that much? I mean, okay, we've got, <laughs> we've got a next caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum, caller, you live on air? Caller, I can, I can hear your background noise. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, Maulana, how are you? Alhamdulillah, and you? Alhamdulillah. Where are you calling uh, from? My name, yeah, I'm, I'm calling from Cape Town. My name is Rashad. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to mention, uh, you know, a few years back, when this earthquake happened in uh, in Iran, yes, <clears throat> this guy that was an uh, expert in seismology or something, or seismo, and he said that the social habits of the people's also got an effect on these things like earthquake and stuff like that. Okay. If you can just uh, take it further. Shukran. Shukran, Jazakumullah. Uh, That's interesting. Uh, if anybody knows more about that, they can also call in. Uh, that social habits of people has an impact. I, I, I don't know if this was in direct reference to, you know, uh, climate change is as a result of, you know, pollution and everything else, which has got to do with our habits. Uh, perhaps that's what, uh, what the brother was, was referring to. But that's also something that we need to look at. We're going to go for our um, final commercial break, I think it is. Uh, and we remind you that the lines are open. 11 086 When we come back from this ad break, we continue the discussion. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the lines. Call us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Where are you calling from, brother? Uh, I'm calling from Durban. Okay. Uh, my name is Salim Mullah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do realize that um, it is a water crisis. Right. And the thing is that I, I find, Mullah, that uh, probably we need to take cognizance of, uh, look, I'm no saint, mm. but I think we are probably judged. Uh, we are actually being punished. Punished in a way that we're not fulfilling our true deen in mm -hmm. perspective. So this is one way of Allah for keeping us in check by holding back the lane. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my thought for today. Yeah, in other words, we, we need to reform ourselves. We need to use this as an opportunity to make yeah, us... Yeah, we need to reform ourselves and even, uh, you know, uh, 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 appreciate water as a jewel of life. Mm. You know? And uh, if so, then Allah Ta'ala, and if we make istighfar and Tawbah, Tawbah and istighfar, inshallah, Allah will really uh, shower us with abundance of rain. Inshallah. I mean, does that mean we have to change our stances of uh, the rain? Because I remember, I, I always tell my children, don't waste, don't ever waste water. Because mm. water is a name from Allah Ta'ala. Indeed, indeed. Jazakumullah for the contribution, brother. Most vital. No problem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, like Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam said to his people, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ Make istighfar. Turn to Allah in tawbah and repentance. إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا He is most forgiving. And then look, the very next verse, what does Allah tabarak wa ta'ala say? That Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam then said to his people, يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارَ Then if you turn to Allah in istighfar, if you turn to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in repentance, then Allah wa will open up the heavens and the water will come. Now some people get a bit sensitive. They say, no, you know, you mustn't say that we are being punished. We don't know if it's a punishment. Look, when difficulties come, our deen tells us it can either be a punishment or a test. Now, how do you know if it's a punishment or a test? It, it's how you respond to it. And in either way, 
whether it's a punishment or a test, we need to respond by coming closer to Allah. Because a test is meant to bring us closer to Allah. And punishment, Allah says, Punishment in this world is also a, a, a mercy from Allah because Allah wants us to get a bit of a taste of, of, of where we're going wrong so that we can change before we are subjected to the greater punishment of the year after, before death, because then it becomes too late to change. Then you cannot change. So what, what we hear from here and what we understand from here is that uh, change is what is required. Change is what is required. You see, somebody made the point that yes, we can talk about it and yes, we can make dua and all of that is fine. I mean, Salatul Istisqa also is established. It's part of the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what, what is the point behind all of it? What is the point behind all of it? That we need to now commit to Allah. We need to come out and beg on Allah and say, oh Allah, it's taken for us to be deprived of water, which is the jewel of life, as one of the callers mentioned, which is uh, the source of life, which is, you know, the basis of life. We are now being deprived and we are in the process of possibly greater deprivation. It's made us realize the folly of our ways. Oh Allah, we, we, we're begging you that do not test us any further. Do not punish us any further. We are now committing. We are making a firm commitment to change our lives. 011-086-7777. We have a few minutes before we uh, wrap up the program. We, we can perhaps uh, squeeze in a call or two if you want to still uh, contribute to the discussion. But in the end, that's, that's what it boils down to. That's really what it boils down to. It boils down to the fact that we need to make a commitment to change. Each of us individually, as you are watching and as you are listening this evening, make a decision, may take a resolution. I'm not going to think about the next person or the community or the nation or the locality or the ummah or humanity. I'm thinking about myself. That oh Allah, possibly there may have been my actions there that contributed to you now depriving us of rain. So I'm taking a resolution now to make sincere tawbah, tawbah and nasuhan, to make an abundance of istighfar, to continue turning to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in repentance. And oh Allah, I'm making a commitment now that I'm going to change my life. I'm not only going to change my life, for the duration that uh, you know the drought continues or the, the scarcity of water or the restrictions of water continues, I'm going, to con I'm going to change my life for the better. Because we must not only worship Allah when times are tough, it's more of an achievement to worship Allah and to be obedient to Allah when things are going smoothly, when things are going in your favor. So these things are some that are, are essential. These things are what we need to keep in mind. I get a message in my earpiece that um, we have one more round of, of bills to pay, one more round of commercials. So we'll go for that and um, the, the lines are still open. 11 086 7777. <laughs> وسود حاضرنا وأوشى غابت مناقبنا وسود حاضرنا وأوشك اليأس أن يغشى أمانينا وينشر الهدياء إيمانا وموعظة just to conclude now tonight's program, we've spoken about the fact that, uh, like they say in English, absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's because when you detached from that which you have become very accustomed to enjoying and experiencing on a very regular basis, that's when you realize how much it's important for that thing to be part of your regular life. And, and in the same way, Allah wa ta'ala's bounty, sometimes we start to take it for granted because we have so much of access to it. It's so, such a regular thing in our lives. And once that regularity is taken away, that's when uh, we, we, we start uh, appreciating. So. By now, we need to start appreciating what a great favor and bounty Allah wa ta'ala has granted us in the form of water. Then we spoke about how the Quran speaks to us about the role of water. It's the basis of life. Allah sends it in, in, in the right quantities. Allah wa ta'ala sends it in the right quality. It doesn't make it uh, salty. It revives the dead lambs. Allah says that We are the ones who have the ability to take the water away. So if the water has been taken away, that's from Allah. For it to come again, it, it will have to come from Allah. So what's the bottom line? We need to turn to Allah. We need to turn to Allah. We need to focus on Allah. We need to focus on remedying our lives. 
on ensuring that we bring the sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam into our lives where we don't waste water, even when there's an abundance of water. And we start learning about water conservation and we learn, learn about water preservation and being responsible not only with water, but every other bounty of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. But it's about a commitment. It's about a paradigm ch change and, and, and you know, mindset change. We need to make a decision right now, right here, to change our lives for the better. May Allah grant me first the tawfiq and all of us. It's been a pleasure to be in your company this evening live from our studios in Sunning Hill, Johannesburg. Until next time, fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. تنهضيه ممن في المسجد الأقصى ما زال يدعونا نديع على الفكرة الأحرار في زمن أضحى به الحق بالخذلان مذكونا فبالجهاد بنى الإسلام قوته وهل لغير قوي الناس يصغونا رباه هيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فأنت من بالتقى والدين يهدينا ادعوك يا أمتي فاستنهضي همما فالمسجد الأقصى ما زال يدعونا ندي على الفكرة الأحرار